I don't think you guys are ready for this one. We're gonna show you how to create a totally custom honeycomb wall using our concrete overlay wall kits. And I just got word from the marketing team, this video is gonna be epic. Let's go check it out. All right, so we're ready to put the design on the wall. Now, what we went with was a honeycomb design, and it's gonna look absolutely stunning when we're done. The easiest way we could think of to get this design on the wall, since it's such a large wall, is we took an aluminum panel. These, this is an aluminum panel. It has two sheets of thin aluminum on the outside, and then on the inside, it has a foam core. So it's pretty rigid, it's really light, perfect application um, for what we're doing. And then we had a local sign shop cut out the honeycomb design. So if you guys wanna do this, call a, call a sign shop, a print shop. A lot of times they'll be able to do this for you. And I'll kind of show you what we did. So we obviously stuck this on the wall. As you can see, we've already started here. So since it's light, I can get it lined up, get it level, and then I can tape it up on the wall and it'll stay there because it's not heavy. So that's kind of how we got to this point. And you can see we used a pencil to mark off all of the honeycomb designs. And then when we had them cut them out, we had them make the grout lines or in between the honeycombs, the width of, I think this is an inch and a half, um, something close to that, not exactly sure. Um, but that makes it really easy to tape it off. And also when you're doing your pencil marks, it's gonna push it out a little wider, which is perfect because we wanna cover up those pencil lines. We don't want those to show. So now when we coat this, all these pencil lines that are inside the blue tape are gonna be covered by the overlay. So that's kind of the process there. Obviously, I'm gonna show you guys here. Now, if you guys, you kind of saw how we got it to this point with the concrete overlay right over the wood. If you guys have a painted wall that's textured and maybe say you have a white painted wall and you wanna do white grout lines in it, you can do your pattern on that painted wall, just like we did here. So just picture this black as your painted wall right now. You can trace out your design, tape off your pattern, and then use our prep replacement primer to lock everything in. And that's gonna get you the bond between our overlay and your painted wall. And then you can just do your overlay instead of doing an actual concrete overlay on the whole wall to get your design. So our overlays can go right over textured painted walls, drywall, sheetrock, whatever. It can go over anything. So just keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to coat your whole wall with our concrete overlay to get a cool pattern like this. Maybe your walls are gray or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can still do the same design and cut out the step that we did to get the wall this. The reason we did this is because we just had a wood wall. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna do a pattern over that with all the seams. So the next step, and this goes really fast as long as you you know, make these grout lines the width of a certain type of tape, right? If these were a little wider or maybe even skinnier, it'd be really hard to tape all that off. So now that we have these the perfect width, it makes it real fast and I'll show you how fast it is. So we need one here. I just, there's no cutting involved or anything. Well, there's no cutting if I can tear the tape right. And again, I'm just trying to stay in between the two lines because we want to cover those up. And then we just go around and start filling these in. And then just try to split the, split the gap, right? Like if you have room on each side, just try to put this in the middle. They're all not going to be exactly perfect, so. But once you're all done, it'll all line up and look awesome. All right, so now we're gonna match this up to where we left off and kind of continue it down the wall. And since we started on the floor, you can tape it up. It does get a little tricky trying to match it up exactly. So I'm just gonna get the majority of it done and then we'll go in and piece in any spots that we want.
So now what we'll do is I know I want the majority of the middle coated with the honeycombs. So we'll start tracing these off. We'll maybe leave a couple opened on the bottom um, and then we'll get another section done here. So just using a standard pencil, you can use a school pencil. This is a construction pencil. Just make sure it's sharp. And when you're tracing these out, you, you wanna make sure you try to keep them close to the same everywhere. I don't wanna like have it angled in and be marking way off my edge. So always be cautious of where you're marking at. Now another tip guys for you, once you figure out what side you're facing this on, you wanna do the same side. If I was to flip this over, it's gonna throw the honeycomb design off. So make sure you're always putting it on the wall the same way if you need to mark, right? Mark the side or something so you know this side facing out, that'll make it easy so you don't get it caught up when you set it down to pick it up. Make sure it's always going on the wall the same way. So now we can pull this off. And we're gonna do one, I, I say we do one more, chase out one more section and then we'll start taping off again. All right guys, so we got two sections. We'll go back to taping a little. Pull this off. And then we know, cause I marked this side, obviously you can mark it better than that, but we'll just keep this the same, same way out. And now we can kind of go to town taping and it's looking really good.
All right, guys, as you can see, we got the design finished, and it only took us about two and a half to three hours to map out this whole design. Um, so it doesn't take a long time. It looks pretty intricate, but when you have stencils and stuff that you can trace, it goes really, really fast. So what we have to do now is since we're not coating anywhere outside of the, the honeycombs, we want to plastic tape those areas off because we are going to be coating this. It's going to want to drip. So I'm going to show you guys a really fast way to tape off a design like this. We're just going to lay plastic from the top, let it drape down, and then I'm going to go around and cut out around it. And as I'm cutting, someone's going to go and tape to seal all that off. And so the only thing when we coat, the only thing where product's gonna go is everywhere the plastic is not. So it's a really fast way to do it. Before you get to this point, you wanna make sure you've pressed down all your tape really well. We like to use the roller that you guys saw earlier. Roll it down really good, make sure you got a nice tight seal. And then we're also gonna be doing uh, another black layer to lock all this in so we don't get any bleed marks. And we'll show you guys that when we get to that point. But right now we're gonna plastic this off and we'll show you the easiest way to do that on an intricate design like this. All right, so we're ready for the next step. Now, before we start coating this, I kind of want to go over a few things. Obviously, this is our concrete overlay over the wood. If you guys are going over your painted walls, textured walls, you're going to want to do this step because you have a texture that you're trying to tape and not get any bleed marks. So a lot of times, professional painters, when they're doing nice, intricate lines uh, on painted walls, textured walls, they'll tape off their design, and then they'll take the same paint color that's behind the tape and they'll paint over the tape line. What that does is that locks in the tape and minimizes or eliminates bleed marks that you're gonna get. So we're gonna do this. We don't necessarily need to do it because we got a smooth flat wall with our concrete overlay, but I wanna do it just to show you guys. We're gonna be using our scratch coat in black 
but this would be the same thing you would do if you were just using paint. You would just wanna seal up all your edges. That way when you do the concrete overlay, you don't get any bleed marks. And then the bleed marks that you do get from painting over the tape, they're the same color as your background, so you'll never see them. So it's a cool little tip, um, and we recommend doing that whenever you're uh, taping a design or a pattern on a painted textured wall that has a little bit of texture to it. So we've got everything plastic off, floors plastic. We plastic off all the spots that we do not want to coat. And then now I'm gonna mix up our black scratch coat and I'm just gonna roll it on and that's gonna seal up the wall. If you have, since it's such a large wall, I'm gonna roll it. If it's a smaller wall or a smaller design you're doing, you can just take a paintbrush, paint in the edges. But again, pretty big wall. I'm just gonna roll it on, it's gonna go fast. So we have our concrete overlay here. We have our black polymer already pre-measured and then our concrete overlay scratch coat. It's like a paste. So Ryan's gonna mix this up for me and then I'm just gonna apply it. Dip and roll like you would paint. Nine inch roller, three eighths nap. All right, so all I'm gonna do, dip in the bucket, and then I'm just gonna roll this on, and I'm just focusing on getting the scratch coat around these edges to kind of seal that up. I don't care if it's got a little texture to it, because we're gonna be doing two coats of our gray texture coat, which has an aggregate crushed marble in it. So you can kind of see the tapes kind of crinkling it up. That's totally okay. This is gonna dry and lock it in. I just wanna make sure I don't have like any big runs or drips or lines or anything like that. We wanna try to get it as flat as we can. And like I said, it's similar to painting your wall, um, except we're just using our concrete overlay. So I'll finish up this and we'll be able to put our first coat of gray texture coat on this right away because this will dry really quick. All right, now we're ready for our first texture coat. We're gonna be doing gray on this, and this might seem like a lot of work, but it's actually not. You can get to this point in about a day. I mean, we're probably, like I said, two and a half, three hours to tape the design. We maybe had another hour in doing this plastic, um, and then obviously rolling on the black was fast. So theoretically, we're probably four hours max, four and a half hours. So. It seems like a lot, but it's not. And yeah, granted we had a few guys, but obviously you can have friends, family members help. This is a very easy process to do and, and to become as custom as it's about to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up our gray texture coat. So this was our black scratch coat. It didn't have any uh, aggregate or crushed marble. So this coat's gonna have the crushed marble. So it's gonna completely cover the black and give us a gray surface. And then I'm probably gonna do two of these coats because I want these honeycombs to be pretty thick and chunky so they really pop out of the wall. So what I have here is a 250 square foot overlay kit. We have 2.5 gallons of our liquid polymer. And then we have one bag of texture coat and it's gray. The, the bags come in gray or white. So what I can do is I can dump this bag into here. Now when you're dumping into the polymer bucket, it's gonna fill it all the way up. So we wanna kinda of mix it slow. It's sometimes good to even have another bucket to dump into because again, it's gonna fill this thing all the way up and it's always good to mix outside or wear a mask. Last thing you wanna do is be breathing in 
a bunch of concrete dust, but I'll, we'll go over the process, how to mix it. It's really simple. And then it's always good to have a corded drill, a power drill, even something maybe a little bit bigger than this and a mortar mixer. So we'll actually, I'll actually probably get a mortar mixer for this. That way we can mix this up really, really well. All right, so I'm gonna cut that tab and then you can just peel this top off. What we wanna do first is pop open this bucket and mix it. Especially if you're gonna be pouring into two different buckets. Like I said before, guys, you can mix in a five gallon bucket. It's just gonna go to the top. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to mix this up without having to, to mix it in one five gallon bucket. And like I said before, motor mixer, one of these guys is gonna work the best. A bigger drill, so you can really spin that material good. We don't want chunks in it. We wanna mix it really, really well. So since I've already mixed this up, again, sometimes a polymer will settle. So we wanna mix that up before we dump some out. And I'm just gonna try to do half and half. And I'm sure you can guess what we'll do next is we'll just try to pour half into there, half into there. You'll be able to tell consistency wise um, how fluid the material is if we need to kind of mix and match the batches. But I'll have Ryan jump in here, pour the powder in and we'll mix it up. All right, so you can kind of see how I did that. I kind of dumped the buckets back and forth and then it, obviously it all fit in a bucket. Now I know we got the right consistency. And the last thing I want to do is carry a full five gallon bucket of this stuff around. So I'll use that other bucket, pour some out. And now I can dip and roll it onto the wall out of these buckets. And then it's good to have a bucket of water, which they're grabbing. We can clean off our paddle wheel to try to keep those clean as well. So we're pretty much ready to go. Um, we're gonna apply it the same way that we did the, the black scratch coat. But instead of leaving it, I'm gonna take the squeegee and I'm gonna flatten it off. And then that's gonna give us um, a nice even profile and it will completely cover the black. We might have some scratch marks in it, but you guys will kind of see it's pretty fast. So you, what you wanna do is start at the top work down because if I start at the bottom and work up, every time I keep moving up, I'm gonna be dripping onto the stuff that I've already flattened off the squeegee. So always start at the top and work your way down. I have a sprayer full of water because this is a porous surface, it's cement. If I'm having a hard time putting it up, troweling it off, I might hydrate it a little bit with the water. That'll keep it from sucking all the moisture, the polymer out of the overlay, right? Obviously, if you guys are going over a painted wall, you're not gonna have that issue. You don't need to spray or hydrate. So we're only gonna do that if I'm having a hard time keeping up with the overlay. I'll mist the surface with some water to eliminate it pulling all of that moisture out of the overlay. So we'll kind of start and I'll just keep that sprayer just in case I need it. Obviously a lot easier if you have one person rolling, putting the product up and then someone else flattening it off.
All right, so a few things I want to point out is you always want to look back and check. You can kind of see we're starting to get some product dripping down here that I've already flattened off. So you always want to kind of go back and make sure you knock these off. Just flatten them off. The next thing is when I have missed spots or thin spots, Ryan will put more product in those areas, like say right here, and I'll just point them out. Say, hey, I need a little more there. He'll put a little more product on there and then I'll just flatten it off. All right, now that we have the wall dry, ready to be coated again, we're gonna mix the same exact way we did on this coat. So one bag, two and a half gallon polymer, mix it in there. Um, so if you guys wanna refer back to that, just go watch that first coat that we mixed for the gray, um, and you can kinda see how we did that. But again, guys, we mix it the same exact way, and we're gonna apply it the same way. There's just a few things I wanna go over before we start. Um, one of those is, we don't want to be rubbing on this plastic very much because it'll start to peel chunks off. So when we're applying this next coat, we're going to be more cautious of where we put the product, try to keep it on the area where the overlay's at and not so much on the plastic. Another thing is we're going to be doing another texture coat. If you guys wanted to make your honeycombs or whatever design you have a smooth finish, you would sand this coat and then apply the scratch coat. So we wanna have more contrast between our black wall because again, our black wall's smooth, it's flat. We wanna have this more rough, more textured. It's gonna create a cool contrast between the grout lines and the background. So again, if you want a smooth honeycomb, you would just sand this, do our scratch coat, don't do the texture coat and you'll get a smooth wall. Um, the next thing is now that this is really porous, the, the scratch coat, the black that we rolled on, isn't isn't porous right it's not as porous it's not opened up you can see how opened up this is so this is going to suck the moisture out of our overlay a lot more than it did when we went over the smooth black so i'm going to hydrate we're going to spray some water we're going to hydrate this lightly mist it as we're coating and you guys are going to see all this when we do it and then the last thing um, we're going to cut our squeegee down a little smaller so we can get into these tight areas without coming out onto the plastic as much. Now, if we knock some chunks off, whatever, we can deal with it, but we just wanna minimize that. Um, and you guys can also do thicker mill plastic in between here as well. This is just thin painter's plastic. If you guys are worried about it, do some thicker plastic um, and you're not gonna have a, a chance of maybe ripping through it. I think we're fine on this, but if we did it again, I probably would do a thicker mill plastic just to be safe, not have to worry about it. So what we'll do is we'll get this mixed up and then we'll start showing you how to apply it. And then the last thing, when I'm doing my finished pass with the squeegee, as you can see, it's kind of all random, like the chatter marks. We're gonna get some chatter marks and stuff. I wanna make sure my passes are all random. I don't wanna pull it the same way every time. The more random, the better it's gonna look. And, and I'll kind of walk you through all those steps as we're doing it. So we're gonna get this mixed up and start applying it. Now I'm gonna pre-hydrate the wall. I'll kind of show you what that looks like and then we'll hydrate as needed as we're applying it. And again, I said we're doing this because this texture coat's really porous. It's gonna to wanna to soak that moisture out. This is gonna minimize it and give us a little more working time with that overlay. You can see it takes a minute for it to soak in so I don't wanna just spray one spot until I see it soak in because then it's gonna start dripping and running. So I'll usually get a coat, real thin coat on everything and then go back. So you can imagine how much 
polymer and moisture that would suck out of this next coat if we didn't do that. So now we'll start applying it. And if it starts to dry out, Tim will just hydrate or I'll hydrate as we're going. And we'll just apply it the same exact way as that, that first gray coat. All right, so when I get a section done, flattened off, I don't have a bunch of drips or anything, I wanna do a random pattern on it just by pulling the squeegee different directions. But you can see my chatter marks and the design and the textures all go in different directions. It creates a really cool look. Another thing you want to do as you're moving along is pulling that material away from the wall because it's going to get thick there. And if we don't pull that away, you're going to have to wind up cutting that out with a knife. It's going to be a lot harder than if you can thin this out. That way when you pull the tape, it comes up a lot easier and it's not so thick. I'm always checking back after we do a section because sometimes you'll get, maybe you'll get some thick overlay here and it'll kind of droop down. You want to make sure you hit those. If you guys miss those, you can always sand them down. But obviously if you can hit them while it's still wet, flatten it off, it's going to make, make it a lot easier. So we're going to let this set up and dry. And then uh, the fun part starts when we're pulling all the tape and, and revealing the actual design. So we'll probably let this sit for an hour hour to two hours uh, and we'll start pulling the, all the plastic and grout lines. All right guys, the time has come to do the reveal on this wall. This is the most exciting part. We get to see it all come together. I do want to point out a few things that's going to help you guys in the future. If, if we were thinking and methodical about how we laid the tape out, it's going to make it a lot easier to pull the tape. Say you started on this side of the wall and worked your way to the right. If you always tape on to the previous tape, right? When I go to pull this, it's gonna lift up that next layer, next layer, next layer, and so on. So if you can kind of try to do that as you're taping it off, it's gonna make pulling all the tape, all the grout lines, it's gonna make it go a lot faster. So just keep that in mind, a little Ligari tip for you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get right at it. We're gonna start from the top, we're gonna work our way down. We have the plastic down here, everything's gonna fall on there, um, and it's gonna start to really come together here in a minute.
So it's time to apply the urethane. We're gonna be doing our WB urethane in matte. Looks really good on walls. And I'm gonna go over the mixing process. So got the urethane here, five gallon bucket. And then I got my water because we do add water to our urethane as we're mixing it. So we're gonna pop this box open here. Pull the urethane out. So we got our A, we got our B, and it says on here, must mix with part B, this is the A, and then blend in 13 ounces of clean cold water. So I have my 13 ounces here, that's all ready to go. I got my drill, my paddle mixer. Before we apply it to the wall, I wanna talk about a few things that we would have done different um, because obviously this was our first time using a stencil and mapping a design out like this. We knew the pencil marks would show up. We were hoping the eraser would take them off. I don't think we'll see a lot of these, but there is always that chance that you might see some of those where we had to remove the pencil because we didn't want that to show up. So as you can see, we were, we were about halfway through and I thought to myself, I'm like, man, I don't want to be trying to erase all these marks. So we started really mapping out where we wanted each design. So we hardly have any pencil marks on this half. And so if we did it again, we'd probably do that from the start to minimize having to come back, erase the pencil marks, stuff like that. Um, so what we did is after we were done, we got those big erasers, erased the marks, and then we wiped them really clean. Now, once this urethane hits, it's gonna darken this all up. These are probably not gonna be noticeable. Um, if they are, they're gonna be very faint. But just being transparent with you guys, doing this again, we would take our time, map it all out, because everywhere the, we have these, the pencil mark got covered. And then obviously that eliminates going back and having to do that. Last thing you wanna do is do a cool wall like this, and then you have imperfections in it. So applying the urethane is really simple. <clears throat> We're gonna use an 18 inch roller. We got our 18 inch roller tray here. We got a plastic bag in there so you don't have to clean that thing out. 3 8 snap roller, we de-shedded it. And then I'm just gonna dip and roll this whole wall out. Um, and then we send enough to do two coats. So if you guys need to do another coat, you have the product to do that. We'll see how this looks with one coat um, and go from there. All right, so the, the urethane's dry now. Um, when you guys are doing your second coat, you do it the same exact way. You just dip and roll. Um, uh, a few things I wanna point out. If you see like roller lines, like say you have a, a faint roller line on one of these spots on the wall, maybe start your first pass overlapping. So middle of your roller's here, edges are out here, here's your roller line roll over there so you're not hitting the same edge every time all the way down. So kind of overlap those roller lines if you guys get those on your second coat. Um, but other than that, turned out really good. We had a few spots that weren't sanded where we marked, um, like right here. So 
you can see one of our honeycomb marks. So that, so you'll see your, your pencil marks if you don't erase those. So you gotta erase those. All the spots that are up here that we erased, you can't see them at all. So again, when you guys are doing this project or something like this and you're, you're tracing stuff out with a pencil, make sure you are trying to get exactly where you want stuff so you're not erasing a bunch of pencil marks. But as you can see, they do go away once you erase them. Dry time on your first coat, you wanna wait before you apply your second coat. You wanna wait a couple hours, two, two to four hours. Once it goes kinda clear, you never wanna apply another coat when it still has that milky white look to it. And if you can put a fan on it, it's gonna help it dry a lot faster. So we put a fan on this and it dried out in probably hour and a half, two hours. Um, so, so when you're doing your second coat, make sure it's all, all the white's gone, even around maybe some of these spots where it might hold some white, make sure all that's gone. And then you can roll your second coat on. So you don't have to wait till the next day to do your second coat. We did one coat on this, but, but the, the process is the same. So first coat, you apply it the same way on your second coat. Um, yeah, and that's it guys. Honeycomb wall.